because once you learn to use it, you'll be able to do so many more things with the cue ball. <laughs> While your mates away at the toilet or whatever, just do this, he won't know you're doing it. That's the secret to consistent snooker. Okay, this video is about three sort of basic ways you can improve your game. We've done, obviously, in the past three biggest mistakes people can make. I know we touched on power and how you play power. You, you'd be surprised because most, most people try and play power and to hit the ball harder, they, they go faster. They think, they think that after they go really fast back, really fast forward, it's actually the opposite. I think to put more power into a shot, your basic cue action should be certainly on the way back, slower. Because what this does, when, when it's, when you can bring, if you bring it back too fast, every, everything's under, everything's out of sync. The, the body moves, the head moves. Um, it's about every, keeping everything smooth, everything still. Um, so you can deliver the cue through the cue ball with that power, but without, without effort, if you understand what I mean. It's almost, you're letting the cue do the work instead of actually your body. We've got a long shot here. You obviously need power. You want to, obviously in a game, listen, you'd be putting the red and trying to get position the pink or black. That goes without saying, but say we're trying to put this red, we've got to get the cue ball back to the bulk end. You obviously need power. So you don't want to go, I mean, this, this is an example. You don't want like to power like, <laughs> that's like an exaggeration. You know, really, 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 really quick. That's, that's not the way to get the power on. get the power on it's about I would even maybe bring your your bridge hand a wee bit further back from the cue ball then that means you can have a slightly longer backswing and then that means you can get through also quite important now everyone's cue action is different some people can play with a pause at the back some people don't play with a pause at the back I think to deliver a lesson I would give to maybe a beginner or someone who wants to advance their game is try and introduce the slightest of pauses, the backswing, because I think that'll improve the timing and let you get through the cue ball much smoother. So an example here, try and play this with extreme power. So my bridge hand is maybe an inch further back than normal. So you're kind of feeling with your waggles how hard you're going to hit it. And as I say, slow back, pause. <laughs> slow back, pause. I mean, that's that, I mean, that's about as hard as I can hit it. But I'm sure it didn't look like I was really putting everything into it. It was all about nice, slow backswing, a little bit of a pause, and just smoothly through and accelerate through the ball. No body movement, just the cue. Okay, another basic improvement you can make to your game is using side. You know, using side can be your friend, not your enemy. I know a lot of tips I give is, is saying to hit the cue ball in the middle. But sometimes you need to use side or learn to use side to your advantage. And what that gives you is you don't have to hit the ball as hard because you can let the side do the work for you. This shot here, for example, I know this red, you probably wouldn't play out for the blue, but I'm going to give you an example. We've got to use the cushion and try and get high side of the blue. So we're putting left hand side on it because when the cue ball hits the cushion here, we want to try and widen the angle and kind of the cue ball will kind of accelerate when it hits the cushion. Now, if you played with no side, middle of the cue ball, you'd have to hit this a bit harder. Okay, you could argue it makes the pot easier, no side. But if you want to take your game to the next level, learning to use side now and then, um, especially if you're playing on, on, say you're playing with, on fast cloths, you don't want to be hitting the balls hard. You want to be smoothly hitting the balls and, and just, let, as I say, letting your cue do the work, letting a little bit of side help you here and there. Now, it's not about, you know, a common mistake people make is when they're using side. They're, they're, I mean, they're like to the extreme side of the ball. Now that's, you, you don't need to do that. I mean, it's literally, that's, that becomes very difficult um, to, to pop the ball because you're putting so much side on that if you don't cue it smoothly, the cue ball, say I'm putting extreme left, that's gonna shoot the cue ball to the right. Literally, if you're playing with left-hand side here, you're literally, say two millimeters, three millimeters to the left of center. That's all you need. So as long as you cue it s smoothly through the cue ball, you're going to get that acceleration of the cushion. So just an example here, I, softly I need to hit this. So I, I'm about halfway up the cue ball. Again, I'm only a couple of millimeters to the right of center to get that run inside. 
and you smoothly through it and you just get that little bit of acceleration of the cushion to make sure you're right side of the blues. The message is, let side be your friend, use side, because once you learn to use it, you'll be able to do so many more things with the cue ball in terms of brake build, in terms of position, than just playing plain ball all the time. So learn to use that side. Okay, we've talked about how side can be your friend and how it can help develop your cue ball control, but there is the majority of shots where you need to hit the middle of the cue ball potting difficult balls and you don't really want to be playing with unwanted sides. So I think I gave an example of, of hitting the cue ball up and down the spots in a previous episode. Bring the cue ball up and down the spots. Now you'll see where the cue ball ends up. Try and stay down so the cue ball comes back and hits the tip. Another way, which is even more simple actually, is every table's obviously got a bulk line you can see across here. So if you get your stance, pretend the cue ball is on the brown spot, and basically you're putting your waggles along that bulk line, and then pretend you're gonna hit that brown hard. And when you hit it, keep your tip there. Now you can see my tip's right down that line. But if you go, if you put side on, if that's, see that amount there? That's hardly any deviation. But if you imagine putting a long ball, the whole length of the table, that amount of side will make you miss it by miles. Even just before, before you play a frame of snooker, if you've got two minutes, one minute even, just while your mate's away at the toilet or whatever, just do this, he won't know you're doing it. And get your cue grooved in a straight line. Pretend that cue ball's on the brown spot and just deliver it. And you say, try and get it right down that bulk line. So once you've done that, to test it out, how about a straight blue? Pot the blue in the corner and follow the cue ball into the pocket after it. That'll test you whether your cue's on a straight line. <laughs> straight cue in. That's the secret to consistent snooker. Hi guys, this message is to say thank you again for supporting uh, the Q-Tips YouTube channel. As you might know, we have been nominated for Best YouTube Channel of the Year by the Sports Broadcast Awards, which is obviously very, very cool. Very much looking forward to seeing how we do, even if we don't win. Um, it doesn't matter because the fact of being recognised is absolutely incredible. So um, yeah, looking forward to many, many more years uh, developing this YouTube channel and much more content to come in the future. So um, thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate it. It's been great fun and uh, long may it continue. Cheers.